With the mushroom movement captivating so many, you know, it's easy to follow the crowd and just lose that unique spark that you had. How can you forge your own path and create a personal connection with mushrooms? Tonight, we have the pleasure of speaking with Ethan Zapach, a remarkable young man from Alberta, Canada, whom I met at NAMA last summer. Ethan is not only a delightful companion, but also an exceptional content creator. I knew I had to bring him on the show to delve into his story and explore some of his bold recent life choices. So if you're passionate about mushrooms, sit back and join us as we journey north to uncover the Michael lifestyle of Ethan Zapach. You're listening to the Michael Geeky Podcast. A podcast that inspires people to grow mushrooms at home to improve their mental, emotional, and physical health. Most people call him geeky, and he is a passionate mushroom cultivator, advocate, and educator. Every week, he sits down with fellow cultivators, mushroom educators, scientists, and therapists to discuss the various ways people can approach mushroom cultivation and how mushrooms can be used to improve their lives. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Myco Geeky Podcast, the podcast that goes deep so you can level up your at-home mushroom cultivation game. I'm your host, Michael Geeky, and we have a great show for you tonight. We're going to sit down with Ethan Zapach uh, from Alberta, Canada. Uh, he's a guy I met in, in NAMA uh, last summer, and he's a cool dude. He's making some cool content on YouTube. He's made some major life choices, and we're going to sit down and talk to him and find out all about those. Uh, first, let me go ahead and shout out, you know, the, the people that are supporting me here, uh, my friends, uh, my Patreon supporters. I appreciate you guys. You guys are helping getting the bills paid. If you want to support me on Patreon, just Google the word Patreon, the word Michael Geeky, and uh, it'll probably be the first link you find, you know, once you do the search. You can also go to patreon.com backslash Michael Geeky. That'll get you there as well. Uh, any support for any amount of time is definitely appreciated. Uh, and, and and if you if you can't spare five bucks here and there, that's okay, guys. Just keep watching the show. Uh, that that keeps me happy too. Um, been having a lot of fun outside, finding a lot of mushrooms. Uh, I found a, a cool one for you, you know me and Happy Hyphae. We we found a bunch of ovoids. Um, I've gone down a couple times and uh, we found some ovoids. And uh, he's been finding a heck of a lot of ovoids, um, both uh, wild ovoids, and then he had a few patches he established last year, and those are working out great for him. Um, but I went hiking recently, and I found for the first time uh, Gymnopolis uh, luteus, not lutefolius, luteus. I have lutefolius on grain right now. We're going to see how I can do. Shout out to Salty Unicorn on uh, Instagram. Uh, he sent me a really nice clone culture of some uh, Gymnopolis lutefolius that he had cultivated at home. So we're, we're going to try to repeat that, that and, and see if we can't be successful. Stay tuned for that. But the Gymnopolis luteus, I'm going to have DNA sequence by uh, my buddy Kyle Cannon, and I'm going to uh, try to isolate the culture and, and also grow that one. I grow all the gyms, right? That's uh, I'm not the uh, only person that loves Gymnopolis. Uh, Happy loves Gymnopolis. Uh, shout out to uh, Josh Barnard. He loves Gymnopolis. So we're going to keep that gym train going, see how it goes. Um, also, shout out to Stealthy Spores. Um, he was so kind as, as to hook me up with one, one of these uh, hero cards. Appreciate it. Um, just trying to do my part. Um, if you guys want 10% off an order, you use the promo code geeky to get 10% off. And uh, the, the little kickback that I get, that's going to go to the Michael Mamas and their Mycelium Revolution. So um, appreciate any support you guys want to give him uh, in the Mycelium, Mycelium Revolution. That would be great. What else we got? Uh, we're, we're booking up on the Mexico trip. We do still have some spots available. If you guys, uh, want, want to tag along, it'll be a good time. We, um, we're, we're going to soak it all up guys. We're, we're going to soak up the culture. We're going to soak up the food. We're going to relax, but we're also going to do a bunch of cool hikes. We're going to find a lot of mushrooms, actives, uh, not actives, edibles, you name it. We're going to find all the fungal diversity that exists down there in Jalapa. So it should be a good time. Uh, and there are still some spots if you guys want to come. So uh, check out mycotrex.tours. Uh, not dot com, mycotrex.tours. Anyway, um, what else do I got going on recently? Oh, um, 
No, we'll we'll get into that next week. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Let's do this. Um, I love this kid. I, I got to hang out with him at NAMA a little bit and uh, thoroughly enjoyed my time with him. We definitely connected and uh, been wanting to have him on for a minute. We finally made it happen. So uh, let's check it out. All right. Welcome to the show, Ethan Zapatch. What's up, man? Not too much. Uh, yeah, just just hanging out. Uh, stoked to be here. I'm really, really stoked to see you again, man. Thanks for having me on. Well, um, you know, it's been a hot minute since NAMA. Um, I, I definitely have on multiple occasions thought about, man, I wonder what Ethan's up to. That was a cool guy. Uh, definitely enjoyed our, our, our day. We got to go foraging and, uh, hang out and have a chit chat. That was real cool. That's really what it's all about. That that's why I tell everybody go to NAMA because you get to meet, you're not the only guy in the room that wants to talk about mushrooms, right? You're in a room of 400 people and they all might likely like mushrooms even more than you do no and and there's always so many characters at a, a mushroom event like that i like i don't think it was unusual that i connected with a dude who also loved mushrooms at a mushroom convention <laughs> um but but it was cool to connect with you and like connect on so many levels um unrelated to the reason the core reasoning that we we were there um but yeah it, it was awesome to chat with you i was stoked to hear from you when you reached out because i too am like what's what's geeky up to what's going on you know me just mushrooms all day every day no matter no matter what man what i'm really loving lately is my kids my my eight and my five-year-old are really getting into it i got i got the five-year-old can identify like seven species of mushrooms already um the eight-year-old is just going gangbusters she harvests mushrooms for me. She can, you know, work a microscope a little bit. So we're we're getting those, we're getting them young, get getting them into it. My 12 year old, no chance. She's way too cool <laughs> for mushrooms. Her. Yep. I, I I lost my window of opportunity with her. So so I got it, got gotta take what I can get with the low ones. But that's been oh, fun. That's, that's awesome. I'm je a little jealous of that upbringing. I didn't have quite the same uh <laughs> intro from such a young age. They're gonna have a good long Michael life. Yes, it's like LeBron James and his kid, right? Like you're like, of course, LeBron James's kid is great at basketball. His dad's freaking LeBron James. Like he, his dad gave the best advice at him doing the best stuff. That's what we're doing over here in the geeky household. We got these little, little Alan Rockefellers in the making over here for sure. Yes, That's if awesome. it was meant to be, I will help facilitate it. Yeah, man, it, it was great. Um, I didn't expect uh for us to click like we did and 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 connect and all that. I mean, right, that's where it happens. In a car, en route to a foray in Appalachia, that's where you're gonna just, you know, chop it up and get to know somebody. So I think yeah. it was great. Um, I love NAMA. Uh now, as I mentioned in the intro. You put together a little video, and I'm not going to lie, man. I was jealous. It, it is so well put together. I think we're going to have to take take a minute here to watch it. Wait, are you okay with that? that? That's totally fine. I really appreciate that. Let, let's do that, guys. So th this is, I think this is great because this is going to give you guys a little context on why I wanted to have Ethan on the show um, and, and, and kind of lead into the story a little bit that way. So let's let's take a minute. It is... Hold on, let me check it out. I think it's about 10 minutes, 10 or 11 minutes. So we'll watch that real quick, come back, and we'll get right into the Michael origin story. My name's Ethan Zapach, and this summer I won a scholarship to attend the North American Mycological Association Appalachia 4A 2023. And I want to take you on a quick journey that conveys the wealth of knowledge I gained, the excellence of the people I met, and the beauty of the Appalachian Mountains. Quick disclaimer, my explanations will not do this trip justice. It was truly amazing. Let's start from the beginning. Despite only having one day of notice for my cry for help in a Charlotte Mushroom Facebook group, a wonderful human being named Tara picked me up from the Charlotte airport, saving me a six hour wait. Which car should I look for? How about the one with the stained glass mushroom on the rear? Yeah, I'm in the right place. The Appalachian Mountains are ancient and lush. We arrived at Canuga and settled in. The schedule was packed. There was so much to do and at least 78 different reasons to procrastinate taking a nap. Each night we met for a recap, which featured awards for fungal finds of the day, then a keynote presentation from an expert in their respective niche. The first night featured Gary Coffin, a revered botanist of the Appalachian region. 
Every night after the keynote, there was a social down by the lake. Let's start off day two with my first reason not to sleep in. We're going to look for mushrooms. I learned so much this weekend and most of that was out foraging. Everyone has their own unique information to share. Throughout this video, I won't go deeply into all the mushrooms we found on forays, but I will show off some highlights from the outings. One of my favorite genera of mushrooms in the Boletaceae, Ario Boletus betula also known as the shaggy stalked bolete. So, and reti boletus ornatopes reti boletus is for reticulated, reticulated bolete. And you can see that reticulation, that fishnet goes like all the way down the stem. It is bitter as a son of a gun and it also will stain your hands yellow for- I eat these stuff. Oh, you do? Yeah, so do. you find <laughs> them that aren't bitter. That, I well, find a ton of them near where I am that aren't bitter. See, and, that's the thing. Yeah, I mean, even if you take a bite of it now, it won't be bitter. Change it with their age. That's bitter. <laughs> <laughs> to my understanding is There's, ready yeah. boletus ornatopes is going to more than likely end up being yep. split up based on the fact that there are uh, the collections ones. from further north that people mm. eat. Um, what are those couple that you would eat raw? Oh, uh, so I will eat uh, Amanita jacksonii uh, raw in like small quantities mm -hmm. and uh, also like any of the classic porcini, so Boletus edulis, okay. and, you know, related species. Very cool. So, again, they're nice when you, like, slice them thin, you just put a little bit of oil on them, and, like, the uh, the Caesars go really well with, like, a little bit of balsamic, a little bit of salt. I like to use MSG powder because I cheat at everything, and then they're just sort of a nice little finger food. And so, these are actually from uh, my yard, uh, my mom's house. Whoa. It's chlorophyllum olive. Oh, that's a real mushroom? Well, no, no, no. It was a mushroom I took a picture of, and I have a friend who's an artist, and she made it for me. That's so from cool. The picture of the mushroom in my mom's yard. Wow. As much as I thought I overpacked, I quickly realized how much gear I was actually missing. Things like a bait and tackle box, voucher slips, and wax paper bags will now be part of my foraging kit, but I didn't know I needed them before this trip. Fundus and Nama made a great video together on how to properly collect mushrooms for citizen science, and I'll link that in the description. Nama had a full team of dedicated people identifying samples collected on the forays. This process would be completely impossible without properly collected and vouchered samples. I mean, without vouchers, this crab claw may accidentally get chucked in with the mushrooms. It smells like rotten meat. This is the beef bouillon bowling. It smells like rotten meat? No, no, no. When it gets really it's old, it's Oh, okay. It smells like meat, but right now. Like curried meat right now. Yeah, awesome. So, can, can I take a sniff? Yeah, it smells like people say beef bouillon or curry. Oh, wow. My does it mom, ever? My yeah. compromise. <laughs> That's so. <laughs> that audio. <for> sure. <laughs> Next up on my agenda is a DNA sequencing workshop led by Mandy Quark, a self-proclaimed mushroom madman with a very impressive resume. Her assistant is Kyle Cannon, one of the only people performing nanopore sequencing on fungi in North America. I put my thumb behind it and you might be able to barely see the piece in the very bottom of the tube. <laughs> Barely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we put the extract um, in here at 80 Celsius for like 10 minutes just to kind of break up some of that DNA. And then I just ran in a centrifuge to spin all the particles down really well. You said this can all be automated with a nice machine? With a liquid handler. Unreal. It's relatively really as easy. There's a four part series on YouTube. Um, by Sigrid Jacobs, and if you haven't seen it, I recommend watching it. And that's actually her protocol, and I just think it's the, the best protocol that exists out there for Sanger sequencing. With nanopore sequencing, we're just handling it such a larger um, amount, and then there's a lot of, like, indexing of primers that you have to do, so there's a lot more pipetting with um, nanopore, and it's not just because you're handling nine, you know, a significant more um, amount of mushrooms, it's because there's significant more amount of steps um, mm. like with indexing primers and stuff so there's a lot of mixing of reagents and stuff so then i'll ship it to california and they'll give me the results back within four days um and it comes in email form and it comes in atcs and g's yeah. um so it means nothing other than you need to put it in blast and run it and start doing that dna analysis and the analytical end that's uh kind of like one of the bottlenecks with sequencing as well this baseline intro to dna sequencing blew my mind Although I don't have any plans to buy a mini PCR, I will be sending out mushroom samples for sequencing moving forward. Somehow it's evening already, and I was fortunate enough to meet some awesome farmers named Gabe and Emma, who brought some goodies from their farm to share. Nice you want to go check it out? Yep. So it's exactly, <laughs> it's one forearm fling. Okay. Meal times were a great opportunity to interact with other foray attendees, and I feel so blessed to have met all the great mushroom folks that I did. Tonight's keynote presentation featured Dr. Brandon Matheny on the mushrooms of the Southern Appalachians. And I've been to several other 
Sleep in? Of course not. Let's go to the bog. Today, I'm improving at collecting and vouchering, primarily because I managed to land with one of the best in the game. This is my spot name. You part Labrador? <laughs> <laughs> this is Alicia Milliken. I'm gonna try to channel my inner Alicia yes. Milliken and say, yes, collect <laughs> absolutely everything and voucher everything. Uh, she is a force of nature and we need her. <laughs> I wear a lot of hats. I am the president of the Alabama Mushroom Society. Here at NAMA, I am on the executive board as the trustee at large. I also have the honor of serving on the vouchering committee and the DNA sequencing com committee and the nominating committee. Um, and then I'm also a volunteer coordinator for the fungal diversity survey. And basically I find mushrooms, <laughs> yeah. I find mushrooms. Alicia was kind enough to share with me her process for identifying mushrooms. Okay, so these are super interesting. Okay, Whoa. so the first thing that I do is you don't want to disturb too much. So I'm looking at, is it growing from soil? Is it look growing from wood? Is it growing from leaf litter? Um, and these are clearly, I'm, I'm moving the, the leaf litter away and seeing that they are clearly growing from soil. And I want to document as much as I can. So I'm going to document before disturbing anything. And it, in the documentation, in this kind of far away photo, I'm seeing what kind of trees uh, are nearby by the leaves that are in the image and kind of, are they growing all real, real close together? Are they kind of spread out? Is there hundreds of them? And I can kind of see there's three or four here. And then you want to dig it up. And I know from looking at these that these are beautiful, are one of the earth tongues. And an interesting thing for earth tongues is if you touch it to your lips, you can feel if it's smooth or hairy because the trico blossoms have real fine hairs on them that you can kind of pick up with your lips or under a stereoscope, which I don't have here in the woods. <laughs> Um, so I think these are one of the the smooth ones, one of the uh, not trichoglossum, but maybe geoglossum or similar. So I dig it up and then I get as much dirt off of it as I can. And I'm going to take some up close photos to document it. So if this was like a regular guild mushroom, I'd be getting a close up photo of the top of the cap, of the gills, of the base. I might cut it in half if it's a, a large mushroom and see if there's any staining, make lots of notes, um, noting odor, noting taste. And that's really as much identifying as I do in the field. I'm, I'm more just documenting. Here's a quick look at some of my favorite finds from the day. This is a great spot. On my way back, I got to ride with Michael Geeky. We had some great chats and he took me on an extra little foraging field trip. The point of mushrooms is to detect them. I was planning another foray in the afternoon, but didn't have time to eat lunch, drop off my specimens and make it back. Honestly, thank goodness I missed it because I was starting to feel exhausted. Don't worry though, I still have seven reasons to procrastinate taking a nap this afternoon. I got to see a lecture from William Padilla Brown on migratory mushroom foraging. Um, so it's like wide open for anybody to discover what it can do. And me and my friends already drink it, so you're not gonna die. Um, he gave an amazing lecture and had one of the best vendor booths at the entire conference. Next up, I got to learn about the tuber truffle, and then I still had time for extra mushroom chatter before dinner. See, it has a little bit of a cap, smooth, uh, fertile surface or underside. Um, looks kind of like sterium over there. For dinner, Gabe invited me to be an honorary member of the Mushroom Club of Georgia, who was gathering on the back pavilion. I managed not to say A even once, but still somehow stuck out like a sore thumb. Gabe and Emma's farm supplied another giant watermelon, more mushrooms, and all the best vibes. This thing is right. <laughs> After dinner, we had our final talk to recap the day. Next year's foray location was announced in Washington, which is close enough to my home to be extremely tempting. Tonight's keynote speaker was Arlene Bissett, the host mycologist for the event and a legend in North American mycology. Her field guides are some of the most widely used and accepted. After a touching final presentation, it's time for my last formal activity, and it's a cool one. I'm going on a UV night hike led by Alan Rockefeller. Here, um, this is a Callistosporium, and so you see the gills on this mushroom glow super bright. Some organisms contain fluorescent chemicals that cause them to glow under UV light. This, like many other things this weekend, blew my mind. Now equipped with a nice UV flashlight, I'm excited to explore the woods back home and see what fluorescent wonders I can find. What? Look at that. The final social was a sad one indeed. I had an early flight to catch, but managed to get a few hours of sleep before heading out to the Charlotte airport the next day. 
Now that I'm back home, I'm fearful I may have caught a fungal infection in my brain. I mean, I can't stop thinking about mushrooms. I'm grateful beyond words for the knowledge I gained this weekend, and I want to share it with anyone who will listen. Before I end off, I want to give an extra special thank you to Tara, who cut her partying short so that she could wake up early and drive me to Charlotte for my flight. She did this on equally short notice as the first time and at a great inconvenience to herself. I also want to thank Gabe and Emma, who sent me back with all the genetics to take my home grows to the next level. I want to thank the Alberta Mycological Society and the North American Mycological Association for this opportunity. Much love to everybody that I met and everybody that has stuck around till now. All right, dude. So I'm going to just say right now, I hate you. That was so good, man. I'm like, w when you sent that to me, I was like, God, dang it. This kid just put together a flawless video of NAMA. Like NAMA needs to hire you to, to do their advertisements for all their forays. Now, of course, they're going to have to get some more cabins because if you're putting together the advertising for it, uh, it's, it's going to kill. <laughs> I, I appreciate that so much. I uh, think you're, you're flattering me a little, a little too much there. I seriously, like, I appreciate that. It was, I, I had to pump that out on a a pretty tight deadline because uh, the scholarship that I got to go to NAMA, um, if I didn't submit the deliverable being some sort of presentation, I, I was the, suggested to do the video and they were okay with that. But if I didn't submit that deliverable by the end of the month when I got back, I think September 30th uh, or something like that, then I wouldn't get the scholarship money. Um, and so I, I had this deadline of like, yeah, a lot of people are going to see this. Like, I want to, I want to make it good, and I want to put uh, effort into it. But the time, days were just ticking by and by as I'm like trying to recover from this Nama experience, going on late nights and yeah, early mornings. Well, I would say you did did fantastic on it. Um, and then recently, Alicia Milliken was on the show, and it came up in conversation uh, as well. And I was like, oh yeah, that's right, you were in that too. And she just she just did another little uh, documentary. So the the fantastic fungi documentary is definitely got uh, a lot of people thinking about mushrooms, not just to consume them, not just to use them for medicine, but uh, just to capture their photogenic nature and and tell a story and, and all that good stuff. And you you did a phenomenal job. No, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. <laughs> there was a, the funniest part, I think, um, just, just with you giving props to that is the, the little section where I had you in the video. The best section, for sure. I, I would agree, hands down. Th that little bit took me longer than any other part of the video. And I'll, wow. I'll explain you why. And it's, I had to perform surgery on the audio uh. um, in that part because... You were saying this awesome, like majestic quote about mushrooms, and then the mm -hmm. end of it trails off into like the crunch of a leaf, and you can't hear anything. The point of mushrooms is to think that I consulted friends and family. I'm like, what do you think no. this is saying? The point of mushrooms is to think that. And so the the phrase I put out for you in the video there, the point of mushrooms is to think that, is nothing even close to what you would have actually said because I just like, hey dude. Off. Letters. When I that is funny you say that because I watched it going, did I say that? I don't even remember yeah, saying that. Say it. I mean, I, I remember thinking the my first thought was, God dang, I thought I said some cool shit with this guy, but maybe I maybe that's the coolest thing I said. I don't know. Now that all makes sense. Of course, yeah. I was just walking away, crunching through leaf litter. Point of mushrooms is to think that. Yeah, <laughs> the classic yes. in your natural habitat. Of in my natural habitat, yeah. But uh, but I knew I, I had to get you in there. I was like, I, I refuse to cut this part, so I will perform surgery on your letters. But you know what? Now, so that's an interesting point to bring up. All those problems, because I'm, I'm doing the same thing. I'm learning how to edit. All my problems are where I learn new skills where I learn editing tricks, where I go, man, I got this problem. How do I solve it? I got to go watch 18 YouTube videos. And then a week later, if that happens again, I know exactly how to fix that problem. It's not a big deal. That's exactly right. Yeah. So see, you're welcome. I did that for you. Thank, thank you so much. I, I owe a lot of 
my, my I life planned it out to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. So let's do this. We got to do the first mushroom memory. Oh. Very first. <laughs> Go way back. Hypno regressive therapy. Let's go as far back as I mean. You're Canadian. You gotta have a. You gotta have a very early mushroom memory. You is that it. is that a token Canadian thing that we? I mean, we you go got a back? lot of you got a lot of woods up there. You guys just <laughs> yeah. you know, Americans. Half of them never even been in the woods. Yeah. So so I I had a, I think like a lot of people, but I I had a pretty mycophobic uh, upbringing. So I I didn't know that uh mushrooms were as cool as they were and i was kind of just taught to to avoid them i didn't know much about them i remember my very earliest memory and this is almost uh crazy to say like almost 20 years ago because i'm i'm 23 right now um and this would have been three four five kind of range where i have just moved out to now um my grandpa's farm um it used to have giant puff balls everywhere and i'm like i'm talking everywhere all through the yard and i think we called them cow patties um didn't know what they were and we just kicked them and we we smashed them and i looking back on that now knowing that i've never found a proper giant puff ball in my foraging days uh and thinking back to smashing them with my feet just kind of breaks my heart because I'm like, oh man, oh if if only I knew. If only wasted on the youth. Yeah, yeah. How how about sorry? How about you? What's your what's your way back mushroom memory? So I grew up in Muskegon, Michigan, and we lived three houses down from Muskegon State Park. We lived on the 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 dunes of Lake Michigan, and all I did was ride my bike around the woods build forts i mean i sun up to sundown was in the woods and so i saw mushrooms all the time i mean i can't identify one particular mushroom i saw a lot of polypores i definitely remember there being poly like shell fungus that i couldn't reach but i would like try to climb the tree to get those that that's probably my absolute earliest, but of course, any any mushroom I could just pluck out of the ground for whatever reason, I don't know what it is about uh, kids, you just got to smash it against a tree. Yep, you have to. Had to, had sure to, don't. had to, yes. <laughs> now, I don't have any puff early puffball memories. Um, and I mean, tiny, tiny puffballs, but no, no giant puffballs or anything, yeah. For sure. One. And it's the reason I say it's too bad now is because I haven't seen a giant puffball in a decade. Like they they stopped coming up here um, and and yeah, haven't come back since. So what used to be literally it's your fault, dude. 100 every Thanksgiving. You killed them. You killed them all. Me. I am the. Yes, you did it. It had to be you. Yes. Wow. I can't believe you decimated the giant puffball population up there you said you were exposing you but you came to you had me on here today to expose me as the puffball <laughs> masochist oh my god yes yeah man the um you know maybe there's a correlation between the child the the youthful instinct to destroy a mushroom Maybe there's a correlation that that those people are more likely to develop an interest in mushrooms later on. I don't know. Maybe mm. I'm wrong. Maybe it's not an evil thing. Maybe maybe we secretly wanted to be spreading the spores from even our youngest days. I don't. Know. That might be it. That's got to be. You're on to something. Correlation is causation. So, oh, I mean, in 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 the myco community, oh, for sure. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. 100%. Always, every time. Um, all right, so giant puffballs. And uh, now let's do this. Before we do uh, your Michael origin story, I've got a sneaking suspicion. I can just tell the, I can tell the guests who are comfortable on a camera, comfortable talking to people. I got a, and, and I saw that video, dude. I mean, we've seen it. That cannot have been the first video you ever made. So give me a little background on on you outside of mushrooms 
because I, I just for you guys watching, you guys got to subscribe to Ethan's channel. He's about to have one of the hot new channels. I, I promise you it's going to be in every episode is going to be entertaining. Everything he puts out is going to be top notch. Um, and I think, I think there's more to the story. Uh, so I want to know why you're so damn good at this. I absolutely love to make videos. Um, I am maybe one of the worst artists you will ever see. Even the Bob Ross tutorial videos, like I am just horrendous. Um, and so videos historically and now have been how uh, I can express my art. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've, I've been making videos for a long time. I, I was, a uh, this might come as no surprise, but I was a drama kid. So I was doing uh, some musical theater throughout school and, and stuff like that. And then uh, it really kicked off when, um, well, I, I mean, I got inspired by like the Casey Neistat style of, of syncing video to music. And I was like, oh, like, this is awesome. 12, 13 year old me was like, this is it. Um, and then I upgraded, maybe not upgraded, maybe downgraded from that when my sister got me a green screen in high school. I was like, what am I going to do with the green screen? Like, I've got to figure it out. Uh, and so I started pumping out uh, kind of meme edits uh, onto an Instagram page, which I have intentionally made very difficult to find. Um, so don't look. <laughs> and uh, from that point, I just kept loving uh, making videos. It, it was just kind of my happy place. Like I just love sitting down and it's a calming process for me like it's something where i get to encounter problems uh like you said and and work around them and like find some way to fix this and i get to do that in my unique way uh it doesn't have to be the same way each time and that's the distinction between different editing styles um so yeah those were kind of the earliest video memories and where i started was just making bad edits uh with my green screen clips and then as time's gone on, I've gotten a little less meme uh, not not that much, but I still love it all the same. All right, I knew it. I knew, I knew there I knew there was more to that story. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I called it. There it is. Now we know. So guys, check this out. I think this is I always love to do like little learning lessons. There's more of you guys out there. If you guys, you know, you got to play the cards you're dealt. And so I'm sitting here thinking to myself, all right, Ethan went went to NAMA. Part of the deal to get the scholarship money was he had to put a little video together. And now he's cranking out some really cool nature-oriented content. And uh, thank God you're putting your skills to use because it's entertaining me. I think it'll entertain any of you guys if you, if you go jump on his channel and check out some some more videos. Tell me about this. I want to know from the point you do the NAMA video, at what point do you go, oh, okay, here we go. I found a lane. I found a lane I want to be in. Because I think that journey has now brought you to, you moved north. Yeah. And, and I mean, I was already, already north of uh, you and probably most of your guests. Yeah. Up, up here in Canada. Um, but in, in Alberta, I moved, uh, about four hours north of where I was at, but more importantly, out of the city, kind of where I was, I grew up and I lived in and into, into nature. Um, so yeah, how did I hit that point? I think the, it didn't start just after NAMA, uh, but that was definitely a catalyst, uh, saying, oh, okay, I love to be in the woods. Like I, I love to, um, communicate with like-minded people and uh, make videos and share that and find community in this space. I, I really enjoy that. Um, but it's, it started a few years prior um, and mushrooms were a huge part of that. Maybe we can get into that uh, a bit later. But post NAMA, I was working in, okay, so he, <laughs> I'll start here. Um, something you wouldn't have known uh, when you met me at NAMA, because it was something that I didn't know until earlier this year, is that I had Rocky Mountain spotted fever while I was at NAMA. What? The tick-borne illness. Yeah. So, wow. so I was like, 
I was loopy and tired and achy during that trip. And it was like, I won the scholarship and I was down in the woods and it was awesome. So the adrenaline pushed me through it. Um, but I, I was off, like I was tired and I got home and it, and it didn't go away and I was having kind of weird symptoms and everything. And so that feeling, uh, I think contributed and stacked on to not feeling super fulfilled in the industry I was working in. I was working, uh, in environmental automation, uh, in marketing and it was, it was super cool. I mean, I was uh, working with mushrooms, uh, and kind of like how we, we can use different environmental parameters to automate different ecosystems like with aquariums and hydroponics and and it was really cool and from the outside i thought this is this is it this is where i want to be um but i just found marketing and sales um to be totally soul sucking uh the longer <laughs> yeah <that> I, <laughs> the longer that i was in it and i think a big part of that is that i'm not the same person as i was when i started going to school for that um I, I've had a lot of other life changes that have pushed me to a point where I care more about kind of the the morals and ethics of what I'm doing. Um, but I've ended up at this place where that's exactly my truth. It's like I, I was like, no matter so a thought I had was no matter how well I perform at this function that I'm supposed to be doing, I will never make a significant impact on the world around me no matter no matter how many things i sell or like how well i do with this thing that i dedicate all my time to it will never make a dent uh and an impact on many other people or my environment and so that uh coupled with feeling exhausted from this tick-borne illness coupled with a kind of catalog of really unique experiences where it felt like everything in my brain and body and all those people I was interacting with around me were like pushing me to get out of this role that I was in that was unfulfilling for me. Um, all of those things compounded and put me to a place where I've now moved out to uh, the property where my grandpa grew up, um, which now is a bit of it, he farmed it when he was growing up but hasn't been lived in for um 50 60 years and it's now more of a a nature preserve um but to look at where i'm at now and where i was six months ago um i mean it's pretty bizarre like le the the decision to leave a a good tech job um that from the outside made a lot of sense based on the stage of life I'm in and to kind of just get out and, and go follow my dream. And I, I guess my need in that moment to be in nature and be connecting with these woods where I'm at and uh, to share that and like follow my passion to make videos and, and just take a whack at it for this stage of life. Yeah. Well, I can tell you this, a lot of people don't get to that point until they're 50 right? They got a bunch of money in the bank. They got a few kids and, and they show up to work one day and they sit down at their desk and they just realize like all the shit they've been working for didn't make them happy. The problem is if you think that, well, if I'm just successful at my job or if I just make a lot of money, then I'll be happy. Right. Cause that's what well, it's, it's right around the corner. Right. Yeah, it's, 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 right up there. I can get there. And it's like, man, I saw some Jim Carrey said one time where it was like, and when I dream, I don't just dream any old dream. No, sir. I dream about being three time Golden Globe winning actor Jim Carrey. Because then I would be enough. It didn't solve any of those problems. And so, I mean, you at a much younger age felt a very keen instinct inside you telling you, man, if you don't get out now. They're going, the sales crap's going to brainwash you completely. You're going to be stuck. So you got out. You did it at the right time. You can sell out any time. You can give up any time. 
But when you're young, this is the perfect chance to go do something like that and, and actually pursue something that makes you feel good and makes you happy. I, 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 I commend you on that move. I'm telling you right now, not everybody does that kind of thing. <laughs> well, I no, I appreciate that. And I like, I have just been feeling such a weight off since being out here. And, and I will say not everybody has the opportunity like I do to do that. Right. Um, I'm in a very privileged uh, place right now where I, where I have this old farmhouse that's been vacant for X amount of years that I, I can come and start to renovate. And, and it's a place, right? Not, not everybody has that opportunity. I, I had a lot of really uh, good mentorship a, as well up to this point in my life where um, even in just the most random places, like I got the advice I needed when I needed it. And I think I was just ready uh, to take in that advice uh, in those moments. And that, that was the only part I really played in some of those moments where I was just letting the wind take me there. All right. Fine. You get no credit. You did nothing. It all just worked out. No, man, don't. You got to you got to give yourself credit for this stuff because. Same person or different person in the same situation doesn't make that decision. So, I mean, you're not the only person that's got a grandpa that's got an abandoned house somewhere. Um, and if somebody said, yeah, you know, what you should do is go rehabilitate an abandoned house in the middle of nowhere and then once you get that done you should start creating some content and you should share your love in nature and your journey of rebirth through that process he's doing that dude. all right I'm, like, I'm getting it like just take the credit <laughs> yes this is it's a it's a cool decision it's a daring decision not everybody makes and that's that's why we're here talking to you man so I think that's great. Um, so how do you go from, I guess I don't want to miss this part. How do you go from kicking puffballs around uh, when you're a kid to going to NAMA? Get me to the why NAMA. What, yeah. why, how did you get to be more interested in mushrooms? Totally. Um, I mean, I'm uh, not going to be unique in saying that psilocybin mushrooms played an integral role in my love for mushrooms today. Um, I was in, yeah, so I guess my, my origin story with, with mushrooms to get to that point is I was struggling in my first year of university, uh, struggling to stay motivated, um, feeling pretty depressed, anxious. I'm diagnosed OCD. Uh, I've had kind of tics uh, all through my life in various moments. And um, as I've gotten older, they've gotten better. But in my lower moments, uh, those things have come back. So uh, it's almost like my body tells me when when something's not right, because uh, I'll, I'll have these childhood tics come back. Um, and I was really experiencing that uh, throughout a lot of my teenage years uh, into I guess I would have been 19 when I had this experience. I, w I was very depressed. Like I, I had a, a bummy kind of childhood um, with how I was feeling. And I, I never really knew why. Uh, and then hit this low point in motivation. I wasn't getting any of my assignments done. And I, I was just uh, kind of at a loss. I was like, what, what do I do? And at the time I was living with my older cousin um, who said, hey, man, like um, I've got uh, I've been wanting to do this anyways. Like, uh, we should have a mushroom trip. Like I'll, I'll set everything up, uh, and you should, you should try this out. And so ended up doing that. I had some really good people around, like a really safe, warm, comfortable setting. And from that, uh, one trip, I had this motivation that carried on for the next year of my life. Like, no redose, nothing like that. I, I did uh, take mushrooms again in that uh, period, but but from that one dose of psilocybin, I, I just had this drive. Um, I suddenly, the very next day, it's like I was getting everything done. I was on it. I was on it with my relationships. I was feeling good. I was like... Um, so just and, like and, after you have a bender at the bar and, and get super drunk. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? No. I, isn't that crazy he'll, he'll how Superman like after, after the bar isn't that next morning, not, right? <laughs> it's such a different drug. It's so, so such different. such a different drug. One and you know what? Something I'm really grateful for was that I was taught to revere it right off the bat uh, um that this is this is something we we do and we take at uh 10 a.m you know this is something we wake up early for we have a good breakfast and we set our intention uh for why we're doing it before we go in um so i i'm really grateful to have had that because at that point it, it could have just as easily uh been used as a party drug for me and i could have been completely turned off and be on such a different life path of uh yeah, just totally far away. And so uh, from that moment, I kept having this interest that never really went away in mushrooms. And uh, at the start, that was all psilocybin. And I was like, how did this thing affect my brain in such a way that uh, it could change my life and my my perspective and all of this, not for the worse, uh, but so like way for the better right it's like sometimes sometimes i hear in the media when talking about psilocybin it's like a change in perspective uh is almost always thought of as a bad thing like changing your mind right but it's such a good thing uh in the case of psilocybin at least it was for me and i, I know that no no medicine is uh fit for all as well uh but for me it it really was awesome um and then from that point i mean i got just super interested in mushrooms as a whole. I didn't realize that mushrooms grew all around in the woods, right? It's like, of, of course I did. Uh, but I wasn't out in the woods enough to see them everywhere. And my my love for mushrooms and this experience kind of came around the same time that my body was telling me, hey, it's time for you to like not live in this concrete jungle box city where you're at. Like, you need to go into the woods a little bit more. Um, and I, I just really felt called to nature. And like mushrooms were a great excuse for me to get outdoors. And it was something to do where I would end up just being able to take a big breath in like a mossy grove of trees uh, and be grateful. And so fr from that, I mean, even though my interest started in psilocybin, it really went into all other mushrooms it went psilocybin and then just medicinal as a whole um and then everything uh so i started get, getting completely fascinated at i'm finding all these different mushrooms and I'm, I'm sure every or a lot of foragers uh hit this point in their maybe year two um when you find all these different mushrooms and you can't identify any of them it's like you you have like like 15 20 and it's like you you have no hits at all um oh well, man it's the, really right the especially the brown and the little brown and white ones oh my god yeah. they're just assholes because they're like yes. this could be 14 different things and i have yeah. no way of figuring it out unless i learn more yeah no i i understand I, for sure about that and in in the first year it's like you chalk that up to oh i don't i don't know enough yet like i'll figure it out next year but then in the next year you're like oh no nobody knows nobody knows what this is <laughs> I've, I've talked to everyone but like, they're just like that's a brown mushroom dude um and so i i think that's really where it turned into a bit of an obsession for me where it's like i am so interested in finding out what is growing like what are these things that i can't really id um and then nobody can id like i'm i'm talking to the experts in my area and i can't figure it out like uh does this grow just here am i the only person seeing this likely not but maybe and we'll i'll never know unless i put the time in to sitting down and and vouchering this and sending it out for sequencing and that's really the point uh, i'm hitting at now so the the pipe dream of moving out here was i want to document the fungal diversity of this area uh, because it's just never been done before um it's it's really diverse it's uh really hilly and it's in the boreal forest and it's got sandy uh, soil uh, so unique species of plants and the mushrooms that grow here it's like i haven't seen anywhere um so yeah that is so cool all right well i guess geeky's gonna have to make a road trip because i love doing that too i love just 
is what I've been saying lately is it's just a really unique dopamine hit when you find a mushroom you've never seen before. It's like why Pokemon Go was popular, right? It's the same <laughs> yeah. thing. It's nature version of Pokemon Go. Seriously. And yeah, and 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 then you, if you get even a little bit into it, very quickly you go, well, shit, I got to learn about these trees now. You know, no. trees are interesting too. And yeah. oh, and then what is lichen? Wait, algae and fungus? What? And the next thing you know, you have a deeper connection and appreciation to all of nature. And it just, for me, that's my church. That's my spirituality. That is when I feel close closest to to whatever made everything is when i start to really see it psilocybin does that as well psilocybin helps you like you don't realize your glasses are dirty and then you take them off and you go wow <laughs> i thought i saw this tree before or i thought i saw these neck of the woods i'm in before but man i didn't and and now i do and it's totally so Really cool. Really cool. Sure, sure. You're you're welcome here anytime. Like if if you're feeling antsy, like you need a road trip, please come out. There's space. Yeah. I'll, I'll make it. That would oh, be awesome. I can tell you right now, I got a couple, I got a little Ohio crew down here that w would probably love to cruise up there. So we'll, oh, we'll, un we'll unreal. Let's make it happen. That would be fun. That'd be a great one. And just, just on what you said of the trees, I mean, I've I've been finding the exact same thing. So something funny was uh, I was filming picking morels. Uh, just a couple days ago and I'm looking back over the footage there's these two black morels growing kind of almost out of each other cluster like and in the footage there's this little green twisty plant and I'm like what is that um and we we end up looking it up and it's a fiddlehead fern um which which is like I didn't know that was a equal almost equal to morel kind of culinary level of good like everybody you just said morels and fiddlehead. To the side yeah, it was like like I'm cutting the morels out and leaving this fiddlehead, and it's just like how many things I don't know and how well integrated uh, the ecosystem is. Right? It's like I've just been separate my whole life. Like it's only just now that I have to try and understand each piece and piece that together because I don't realize that I'm part of the ecosystem. That my body's made up of little bugs and like all this stuff. I'm I'm just learning and I'm just at the precipice. Yeah, it's uh I mean it's it's significant. It is um I'll tell you what it is for me. I go to a party and what do people talk about? They don't fucking talk about anything. Hey Bill, how are you doing? Oh, how's the kids? Oh, yeah, I went golfing last weekend. Cool. You bought some clubs, you hit a white ball around. That was a really good impression of John. Oh, generic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, exactly. Yeah. I man, I just can't do it. It's not my deal. I, uh, you know, if if you like sitting in church and listen to somebody give you like a little wise quote or a little like basic life advice, if that actually motivates you to go out then and change the world, great. I'm just sitting there going, why are we all sitting in this church? Like, are there people that need help? We Why don't we all, all 500 of us go out and actually help somebody? We could clean somebody's house. We could rake somebody's yard. We could do a lot of stuff real fast, but we don't do that. We just sit in there and just talk about how great God is and we love him so much and all that stuff. And I'm just sitting there going, there's no way this God wants us sitting here doing nothing. But out in the woods, if there's anywhere it's, in my opinion, okay to sit and just try to feel connected to God, Man, it's in the freaking woods, right? It's even, yep. I mean, it's in multiple texts for multiple religions. Quotes about split the rock, there I am. I'm in the, you know, just correlating God to nature. That's done all the time. So that's that's what works for me. If If you like singing with the choir, that's great. That's just not my jam. So yeah, man, just getting out there and learning and connecting and appreciating and observing that's it's definitely feels good uh it's a great stress reliever too no doubt now i have a question 
because this just made me think because I'm I'm not so OCD I, that I need medication. I don't like have to turn the doorknob five times or I don't I don't have necessarily, you know, odd, more odd OCD behavior, but I'm definitely a little OCD. I got to the dishes got to go a certain way and this has got to get moved over here. And when I was a contractor, my site had to be clean as a whistle all the time. I definitely get a little neurotic about stuff. And so for me, mushrooms has helped channel some of that, right? I can, my cultivation methodology is really precise and I take things seriously. And if I find a mushroom, I got some microscopes, I can go, you know, measure some spores. I can do stuff like that. Have, how have you felt getting into mushrooms, connecting with nature? Do you feel like that organically helps? <laughs> well, I, I could have guessed, uh, you have a little bit of OCD in you by looking at your uh, lab in the background. Looks a little, a little too excellent. Uh, it looks so good. Um, it's but, all blurred. It's a mess. You just can't tell. Okay, I got you. It's just the bouquet. That's that's yeah. it. Um, yeah, I mean, m mushrooms have definitely helped my OCD. Uh, they did that in a lot of ways, though, uh, beyond just being in nature. I mean, psilocybin specifically really helped my OCD, I would say. Um, psilocybin helped me wake up to difficulties and struggles I had with addiction from a young age. I mean, addressing that helped my OCD, not in the moment, but years until now, like uh, that has made a world of difference, not suppressing uh, things inside of myself. I don't feel this anxiety of like, they have to come up in my body. And of course, like when you're experiencing that, you, you can't consciously place why. Um, but, but that's made a world of difference. And then, um, yeah, I, I don't think maybe, maybe it's just my brain. I want to give the benefit of the doubt, but I don't think any human brains and bodies are really meant to be in the roles that we're in as society members now. Right. It's like, it's like, I just wasn't built for this mold that, uh, everything has been trying to put me in for my whole life. And, and I thought, Oh, it's my fault. It's like, I'm the reason that I, that the mold doesn't fit. Like I've got to change something. And it's like, no, I'm, I've just can't sit in a chair for that many hours a day. Like I have to go around and kind of be, be in nature a bit. I have to contribute and give back to nature uh, somehow. Right. It doesn't like, I, I can't go and like, manipulate people for eight hours a day and then come home and like live a good life uh in sales it's it just doesn't work like that for me some people can i've met people i guess that uh can at least outwardly do something like that but uh it was unsustainable and and there was a, a ditch in sight for me so yeah mushrooms in a lot of ways have helped my ocd but not not in black and white like i organize things better because mine has never presented that way my OCD, it's, it's, and you, you can ask my, my partner, Chloe, she would, she would say, uh, <laughs> I've got OCD in the right way. Cause I'm not, I'm not leaving all the dishes spotless and, and tidy. It's, it's in some other ways for me. Yeah, man, I can just not ever get sick of hearing people talk about the impact that psilocybin, even, I mean, some people some of these cultivators are like, oh, yeah, I had one trip. It changed my life. Oh, cool. So do you microdose? No. Nope. How often do you trip? I don't trip anymore. Why you grow mushrooms? Well, I mean, I love them. They changed my life. And, and cultivating them feels good. And I share that medicine with other people. And I'm like, there's nothing else in the world like that. No, nobody like nobody shoots up heroin and then goes, ah, this just improved my life. I want to start uh I want to start cultivating opium poppies and share heroin with the world. <laughs> People don't do that. That's there's something real unique about these mushrooms. You're, you're absolutely right. And I, I don't think any other substance really communicates with you the way mushrooms do. Um, because the, like, the mushrooms tell me, and, and I would think I was crazy hearing myself talk now, like years ago. But I, I have gotten to this point, like practically and in steps, like the mushrooms tell you when you need another ex experience and when, and when you've got stuff there right and, and it's not you don't have to 
even have the mushrooms uh, in that moment to really understand what's going wrong because they've they've given you the tool to live a better life like while you're sober. It's well now, so I would say that is the kind of thing I hear somebody say who has taken the concept of integration seriously, who, like you've already mentioned, you know, establish a set and setting. I think that's also why a lot of us who, a, a frequent story I hear, and this was my case as well, um, you know, oh, I you sure, in college I did mushrooms and it was cool, but didn't change my life or didn't this, that, or the other thing. Well, sure, because you were, you were using it recreationally. There was no set or setting. There was no... Re- no sacred relationship. There was no reverence for it. It was I'm drinking this beer. I'm smoking this joint. Oh, mushroom sweet. Let's do those too. Right. Like mm-hmm. these mushrooms are way more sophisticated than that. If they know they're just one of many and, and they're, they don't really matter that much. They ain't going to do as much for you. And you mm-hmm. can use them that way. I'm not knocking people who, who want to use them that way. But boy, if you take them seriously and you set your set and your setting and you do some integration work afterwards, boy, oh boy, absolutely can change your life. I mean, Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, even, even in any of those moments, like you have to be ready and willing to go the direction, right? Cause I mean, I, I've had a, uh, a quote unquote bad trip before, right? Uh, something I would just call a challenging trip because challenging. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was at war with the, my demons that I was suppressing, you know, it's like, I was saying, Nope, well, I don't want to go that way. And the mushrooms like, no, 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 we're going this way. And, and so the only way to stop was to shut everything down. Right. And, um, but, but just to listen to what's being presented with you and like, take everything at at face value and, and go with it. Um, yeah. You get what I'm saying, but I do. Yeah, man, it's that whole, um, it's in the serenity prayer, right? Like, uh, you know, it's real easy to want to control the things we can't control. That's what we do by nature. Those are specifically the things we want to control. We don't want to control the things we can control, like our attitude or our outlook or our daily behavior set. We don't want to control that. We want to control whether that guy gives us the job we want or whether we get this promotion or whether we can afford to buy this or go on that trip or buy a new house. All these things that we're we're convinced are going to make us happy if we could just have them. And God damn it, why did that person, you know, take that away from me? And and then psilocybin enters the picture. It's you know, it's like if you've been on a roller coaster. I'm the dude, I'm in the front seat every time. My hands are up in the air from the minute that coaster starts clicking up the tracks. I'm all in. I'm all in. Let's do this. Because at the end of the day, I mean, why would you, don't get on the roller coaster then. You 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 waited in the line. Yeah, I waited for two hours, man. Get the full experience. (laughs) And the roller coaster don't care what you think about it anyway, right? It's going to take you on the trip. That's exactly what the psilocybin mm. trip is going to do. It's going to take you. You can resist it or you can just go with it. And then like you just said, right? I love that you said challenging and not a bad trip. Like, why is it bad? You didn't like it. I don't make it bad. Yeah. Like, I don't like double fudge chocolate chip ice cream. That don't mean it's bad. I just didn't like it. Right. It, it takes a lot of perspective to say that though. Right. To, that I mean, because, it just and, takes a little and, bit of perspective. Yeah. I, I don't even know if it takes a lot, but again, it's what we want to hold on to. We want to resist. We want to change. God, I'm, I'm raising three kids. My 12 year old, She's already, you know, she's 12 going on 21. She she doesn't need me anymore. She knows everything. And you know, there's a little party of that wants to go, but she should listen to me. But nah, she's a person, right? She ain't been no different than I did when I was 12 and 13. So hmm. we can we can secretly want to change all those things or we can go for it. Just 
take the ride, see how it goes. How, how much perspective do you get on a daily basis uh, raising three kids? How much do I want? <laughs> I get more than I want every single day. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. In the beginning, right? The The first kid particularly, it's new. Everything's new. It's brand new. Like I created a life or I played a role in creating a life and I'm watching it grow and unfold and everything they learn and you feel so smart because they're like daddy i don't know how to tie the shoe can you tie it for me your daddy what's one plus one and you're like god they don't know anything they're so dumb they're so inexperienced here i am providing everything they need and then as time goes on they don't need you they don't want you they don't want to listen to you and that right there that is when you realize i i i think for me anyway that's when you go, okay, I mean, I thought, thought I knew what love was, but if I, if I don't want this child to be their own person, how, how can I possibly say that I love them? Hmm. I, have to, I have to want for them everything that I wanted for myself, like at any point in my life, right? Like I wanted freedom as a kid. I wanted to, as soon as I could get a driver's license, man, I, I wanted to hit the open road and get out of Dodge and do all that stuff. How can I want that for me and, and say she shouldn't want those things if she wants those things? So, yeah, it it definitely, it contextualizes your own life all the time. But uh, the psilocybin has, for me, helped me to accept um just how the world is. And that, like you said, you were talking about being in nature and realizing that you are part of this bigger ecosystem, right? Like we all are, everything is, everything is operating within the ecosystem the way it is supposed to. We might decide we don't like certain things that are going on, but it's all, everything is doing what it's designed to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. My, 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 my thought on all that stuff. I, I can understand it would be difficult to to hit that point and be like, ah, oh, damn, I raised a critical thinker. You, It's funny you say that. My parents, very religious, definitely believe in God, Christian God. And uh, me and my sister, and both my parents were educators, uh, high school teachers, and definitely expected us to get good, good grades. You know, we did. We We excelled in school. Uh, the one thing they didn't plan on was that in raising critical thinkers that we might be critical of their religion. So they definitely wished we had been more religious because it's awkward, right? Like it's awkward if you're parents and you believe this thing and your kids don't believe it. So, you know, it's a bridge. It's a, that's a gap. So. Yeah, I, I true. can definitely resonate with that. Way easier to just make your kids Fall in line, right? I play football, son. You got to play football. I like this. You got to like it. I voted for this guy. You better vote for that guy, right? It's way easier just to make your kids into a mirror image of you. But boy, I commend anybody that has the the courage and understanding that you your only job is to let that child become who they're supposed to be mm -hmm. without you radically controlling all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's like when you grow mushrooms, right? Some of them are just little yeah. mutated weirdos, and you just got to let them be mutated weirdos. That's okay. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Yeah. No doubt. All right. I'm, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll let you get back on track. No. Uh, oh, if you have a tangent. Oh, I have, I have a tangent. Back. I'm I'm just, I'm so excited to uh, get growing here. I, for the first time, I have a, like a dedicated mycology lab of sorts. Uh, in this house that I, I've like did the time transformed this old room and like got the stainless steel table and got the the flow hood and, and all. And so I'm like building up, going to build up the culture library and really take a whack at it. Love it. Well, we can, you know, if you need something, let me know. I, I, I can help. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be in touch. <laughs> that is great. That is great. Now, let me I'm tell you what you, also got to think about doing is some outdoor beds. Mm, it, yeah, okay. Yeah, man, you can grow bluets, you can grow 
shiitake. You can grow a million different things outside. You can grow cubes outside. Hmm. It can be done. Yeah, for we, sure. we will. We'll have to talk afterwards about this. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, man. If if you got if you got acreage, man. You could get some blue patches going. You could, man, you could have your own little. I've I've talked on this show a couple times about this idea. I have a dream. My dream is to create like a fungal zoo. I think it would be cool to, over the course of 10 or 20 years, establish different um, regions on a property that have certain mushrooms. So if you come at different times of year, there would always be just spectacular flushes of, you know, I don't know, five to 30 different species of mushrooms. I'd be curious how those species would interact with one another. Like if one would be got to find uh, out. Yeah. More yeah. aggressive or something. I'm That's sure. Such, such a good yeah. Idea. I, I'm, I'm sure there'd be a learning curve on some of those. Yeah. Now on the flip side, the more foraging you do, especially if you go foraging in the same spots over and over again throughout the year, you start to see there are many mushrooms that I don't know if they need each other, but they tend to hang out. Yeah, you know, totally. like you, you, you really can see if if you see one species on a, a rotting log, you can go, well, here are my top five, and then sure enough, a week later, three of those five are there. So yeah, I, I, I think you could, if if you were smart about it, I think you could put together, you know, groupings that that would definitely work. I think you could also totally fuck it up, and over time, have one, you know, dominant species just take over. Probably don't want to. You know, don't want to purposely inoculate a bunch of honey mushrooms in in your woods unless you're trying to have your trees fall over. But yeah, uh, yeah. So anyway, outdoor grows, man. Let's let's do it. Uh, in five yeah. years, we're gonna come back. I'm gonna do a on location. We're gonna see all these massive beds of all your mushrooms. I think that'd be very cool. Now, <laughs> let's do it. So, you recently also told me. In one of your emails, you had mentioned that you got involved with the Alberta Mycological Society. So tell me a little bit about that journey, how that's been, um, how you went from not involved at all to now you're a board member. Yeah, um, for sure, for sure. Uh, so the Alberta Mycological Society is who sent me to NAMA. Um, they put out this scholarship. I had been a from the fence observer of the Al Alberta Mycological Society for about a year. Um, my my aunt was a member already, and I was I was thinking like, okay, like maybe I'll get a membership. Event. Like this will be the year I'll I'll catch some forays. Um, and my aunt sent me over this email uh, announcing the scholarship opportunity. She said like, this is this is right up your alley. Like you should apply to this and so uh, i got a uh student membership with the ams that same month and then applied for the scholarship um and i ended up getting getting picked for that scholarship i for sure i i attended my first foray and then submitted my application um and yeah i mean i was really i didn't expect that at all like i expected maybe a little bit of favoritism to uh, earlier members or or something of the sort um but yeah what was not complaining that was a really cool experience uh and the ams was awesome to work with uh throughout that period as well just really communicative and uh hooked me up sent me down uh, it, it was really awesome so after nama i had a little bit more involvement to put out the video and i i was just talking back and forth with some of the leadership of the AMS and um I guess I didn't from the start I didn't have my sights set on getting involved beyond just getting involved as a, a volunteer and like where where can I help out? Um but I had a presentation of the video at the annual general meeting in I guess it would have been February. And during that uh I was recommended by some people to run for as a board member. Um, and then I, I also thought, yeah, that, that would be a great way to get involved. Uh, I still didn't think um, I had much of an, a chance uh, to do so. But I, I definitely think it helped that I got to play my, my whole NAMA video before the elections came up. I don't know if that was entirely fair. 
Uh, that no, I you crushed him, dude. You, I mean, after watching that video, campaign. Who, who wouldn't vote for you? Yes, it'd be crazy um, not to. I appreciate that. Um, and so, yeah, got got on the board and got to get involved past that. Um, I found marketing, like I said, to be very soul sucking. Like that is a a term I can use in conjunction with marketing and sales. But I recognize the value of some of the skills I've gained from there to kind of promote good content and good education. So th that's the main uh, role I've been taking thus far in the AMS is uh, just beefing up their communications. Um, and there's another really savvy uh, person, Mel Hahn, the vice president of the Alberta Mycological Society. She's been taking on like the, the brunt of all this for a long time. Um, so it's, it's good to have someone who already knows what they're doing and we're both kind of marketing and graphic design and I, uh, in that realm. Um, and so I'm just, I, I figured that the AMS is such a good way to learn one, learn more and connect with other people, the mushrooms and find that community, which is just so important as a human being. It's like find your people and, and ride with them. Um, and two, it's, it's a great vessel for me to do something I really love, which is uh meeting new people and educating and um just just talking to people educating not necessarily meaning that i know more than you and so i will uh tell you what i i know and it has to be this way e educating more meaning like let's all learn from each other and like no no information's off limits like what what can i provide to you um that's an environment i i really like so i've found that with the with the ams and i'm uh really looking forward to a a good year with them i've i have a two year term uh so i'm i'm going to be on for a while but i mean oh, I'll, man I'll... you haven't you gone on like those trips to florida the lobbyists aren't like trying to pay you off and all that stuff <laughs> cuz two years that's not long enough dude you got to you got to reelect yeah all right you gotta, um you gotta, there there was a big more. there was a big campaign uh that's been failed for a long time for the the mushrooms you see in the logo there for the AMS. Uh, those are Licinium borealis or boreal. And um, that is our provincial mushroom. That is not an official uh, provincial mushroom. Um, because every four years or so when uh, the campaigns from the Alberta Mycological Society finally get to the point where we've like lobby people. Okay, like, Let's let's make it official provincial mushroom. There's like a a governmental leadership change, and then it all gets washed away again. And yeah, yeah, that's, that's really real, cool. man. My my wife's job deals with some of that. They 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 work in honing policy around homelessness and stuff like that. And just when they're getting somewhere, then you know there's a new governor. Yeah, and the new governor's got a new idea, and they don't they don't want the old ideas anymore, and yeah, that whole like election cycles and anytime you have elected officials, it gets a little tricky. Yeah, yeah it's no unfortunate. <laughs> all right. Um, so so what all do you guys do? Are they where's most of their leadership based out of Calgary or Yeah, so um Edmonton uh is where I think most of the leadership is based out of. Now it has really branched out to Calgary and and greater alberta um but the the club was originally like the edmonton mushroom club uh the, yeah and, and then it branched out to become alberta mycological society um but it's it's really just now that like everybody and their mom and their grandma and their sister is getting in the mushrooms right um so yeah but like thus far we've seen a huge involvement um i think the 4a coordinator was mentioning like we saw 40 50 people out on back to back forays uh thus far this season which for us up here like that's unheard of um yeah so I'm, I'm sure it'll be a a good year with lots of mushroom folks well i mean i just like why not get out in the woods i mean yeah, totally if you're gonna like walk a, around the woods excuse. learn some yeah yeah exactly and and like you said, I think a dynamic that I really like in this, I could not, you worded it perfectly. Um, you know, education is different than lecturing 
or it's different than uh, just a display of knowledge. Um, the coolest thing for me that I have seen, I saw this at NAMA, I saw this in many other MICO settings, is the best is when nobody knows what it is. And everybody's got to roll up their sleeves and everybody's got to have a thought and everybody gets to say their piece and, and slowly but surely you either accept defeat and say, well, we can get to genus, but we're not getting the species on this one. Hopefully somebody can barcode it for us and maybe get a hit that way. Um, or you actually all work together and figure out what it is. And that's really cool. That's, that's like that tribal learning, man. That's that learning feels really good. No doubt that that was the uh, the best energy I found in Nama was in that uh, the gymnasium where they were doing all the uh, actual identifying because it, like when when you're in that mode with every, all these people who like just wanted to figure out what this yeah. mushroom was like that was yeah. powerful. How about I mean so we can both speak to this because th it was both our first Namas. There's something first off about realizing that there's like hundreds of Alan Rockefellers in the world. <laughs> there's a lot of people obsessed with mushrooms, right? Um, no, maybe nobody takes as good of pictures as Alan Rockefeller does. But for me, one thing that was really cool was seeing a lot of people who are radically obsessed with mushrooms, who have been obsessed for a long time. Some people got PhDs and built uh, entire professorship careers around it. Some people have written multiple books. Some people have gone, I mean, like some of these guys like Walt Sturgeon. I mean, how many hikes has that guy been on? Dude, Lord only knows. Thousands and thousands and thousands of hikes. He's seen some of these mushrooms a trillion times. You know what I mean? And to be around those people is really cool. But I agree with you to walk into that ID room and see, you know, a thousand mushrooms on a table on all these tables and see people shuffling around and moving things from one spot to the other and pulling out field guides or moving one over to the little microscope uh, station, you know, where somebody's going to take a look at uh, some spores and just to see what a well-oiled machine it all is. And you're like, Oh, People have been doing this for a minute. This is, you know, this is a thing. No doubt. This, uh, there were so, people. Oh, sorry. Oh, so, sorry. Um, something I thought was super cool at NAMA, something that I didn't expect was um, almost a bit of the inverse. Like how many people there were just cool human beings, no formal education in anything related to mycology or biology or chemistry, and like made a living for themselves in something somewhat related to mushrooms or nature. Um, and they were like just really cool folks into mushrooms. Uh, and that was something I didn't expect. I thought it was going to be a bunch of scientists in the woods, but most of the people I talked to were just like got totally hooked somewhere along the way. Uh, it changed their life for the better. And, and they just want to be around that energy moving forward. Yeah. See, I liken that. I agree. I liken that to, um, you know, have you ever heard of Gus Macker? It's a little, no, I haven't little three on three basketball tournament in uh in michigan some some great players up there right nobody's in the nba right nobody's pro but i mean some exceptional basketball is still happening or have you ever walked into a bar and heard the most phenomenal guitar player you've ever heard in your life and you're like who's that guy he doesn't have any albums he's just a random dude that's amazing at guitar that it's exactly the same in in mushrooms right you you got the the famous professors you got the alan rockefellers and then you also just got a guy who you never heard of who knows a lot about mushrooms because he loves them yeah <laughs> that's a, that's a that's great cool. example my my family's token road trip album was just some uh mixtape that my dad picked up when he was uh, out east on vacation when he was younger um, and it was just this guy and it's like unbelievable, amazing songs, like this guitar kind of folk sound. We listen to it every road trip. You try to look this guy up and he yeah. doesn't exist. Ghost. Yep. 
to just completely keep going on this metaphor train here. Um, it's like if you, you've you never been, you know, you, you know those people that don't really love music. I mean, they listen to the radio if it's on, but they don't care. And then they go to one concert. And something about that concert changes their life. And the next thing you know, they're going to a million concerts and now they love music and they're buying albums and they're doing this. And I mean, I, I, you're younger. I know the like buying albums thing is maybe not as much a part of your experience. What's an album? But you know what I mean? Like you, if you have one tremendous experience, it, it can change everything. And, and I, I really think that really think whether whether you get involved with uh your local mycological society whether you go on a nama foray out of the blue for whatever reason and you see just how cool and fun and gratifying this can be whatever it is however you get involved or whether you just watch fantastic fungi and are like holy shit i didn't know mushrooms were so cool whatever brings you to the the myco table you know, welcome. I, I, I think it's cool. I think it's great that so many people are getting interested in mushrooms. I just pray one day that my kids come home and are like, yeah, we're, I'm taking my mycology 101 class. That's, that's, that's when I great. know. All right. So you're, you're doing now, how often do you guys hold events? Um, you're not too far from Edmonton, right? No, I'm about uh, an hour and a half north of edmonton okay all right yeah. so it's it's not too bad to get down there it's not now, too bad and we we do like there there are multiple forays going on every week uh, all over alberta yeah like i'm i'm leading one this weekend uh out by where i'm at um awesome, but yeah dude. like just kind of all over yeah see this is uh i i talked to alicia milliken recently and she was kind of echoing you're you're really serving as a great example of a lot of the things she talked about which is if you're genuinely enthusiastic and interested and want to play a part, you can. You just got to step up to the plate, take a swing, go for it. And, yep, most of these places want you involved, want want you to lead forays, get more people into it, learn together. Five years from now, you're going to know so much more stuff than you know now, Right. How long does it take to get a degree in chemistry? Four years. Cool. Four years from now, leading all these forays, you're going to know 300 more mushrooms than you know now. You'll be able to just glance at something and know what it is. You'll know how to ID it, right? This is this is great. I, I think it's so cool. And more importantly, that YouTube channel. Let's let's talk about that. I, I I'm I'm getting pretty excited about what I'm seeing out of the gate from you with this YouTube channel. Sure. Um, yeah, I have a, a lot of content planned, but at its core, it's just something I love to do. Um, so I didn't, wouldn't care much if nobody saw the videos. Um, it's awesome to have people watch the videos uh, and get involved and, and leave comments and, and the whole works. But, oh, I just, it is serenity it is peace for me to sit down and edit a video so i i've been loving that i have content planned kind of i mean it, it started as an idea just to do mushroom focused content and obviously like the best marketing approach is to niche down uh because you'll if you try to go too broad you'll miss the whole audience um but as i've been out here i mean everything is so interesting like <laughs> just a couple weeks ago it was frog mating season for the wood frogs in the pond right out front of the house and so i'm I'm hearing these like these quacks almost for a couple days in a row i'm like what are what is that and i'm like those are those are ducks or something and my partner chloe's like no no like those are those are this thing um and we go down there and it's just like um do you know the game animal crossing Have you ever seen that when people talk they go like rawr, 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 rawr. It, it was like exactly on that. Like it sounded exactly like that. We're like, what is this sound? It's bizarre. Um, and then it's wood frog mating season. So we just like look down and we see thousands of frogs like going at it, laying eggs, like eggs are everywhere. Wow. Frogs are you thrashing. Just, 
you walked into a, a frog orgy and you yeah. didn't even realize it. It was it was bizarre. And so like for a couple of days in a row, we went out and like I got footage of that. Um and then a week goes by, like they kind of quiet down, and then suddenly it's the Oriole chorus uh frogs mating season. So a whole new sound, a whole new thwack of frogs going at it. Um so so like that's a video I didn't expect to make. Uh oh my god, that's too but funny. I'm like I'm kind of just making whatever is interesting uh, to me out here and, and documenting yeah. this area that to me is, is so brand new. It's like to a lot of people, this probably wouldn't be that unusual, but to me, having grown up in a city, being deprived of th- these cool sounds of frogs quacking in the springtime, <laughs> like th- this is next level cool for me. Um, I don't, I'm trying my best to avoid it, but I I'm, might even be becoming a birder. I'm uh oh doing dude doing everything I can to I know <laughs> I know be careful um we were have you seen the movie uh I think it's called The Big Year or A Big Year no I haven't hold on let me look this up see if that's is right The Big Year 2011 Steve Martin Jack Black Owen Wilson it's such a cool movie and God, there must just be a trillion birds up there, though, right? Especially it's, in the summer. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly why I've been noticing them. Like, I just right out front, again, the, this pond is uh, 50 feet from the house. And, uh, like, we're, we're seeing great blue herons come out. And we're seeing uh, hawks circling. We're seeing owls, uh, like, great gray owls. And uh, it's really, really cool. Uh, of course, we have the the beavers that live in there as well. Uh, I think there's seven beavers living in that pond right out front right now, um, which is super cool. I mean, they'll come out around dusk and dawn, and just watching them work is that's inspiring. That'll give you some motivation. You're like, well, if they can dig a hole through the road and take out eight trees on the night shift, like maybe I can <laughs> get up and <laughs> pump this out. Um, so. Yeah, th- there's a lot of really cool wildlife. I mean, even just the the other day, um, there was a black bear just in the right out front of the house. Uh, see, just moose droppings absolutely everywhere. I'm not a super early riser, and I think they come around in the morning a lot. But like, there's always something, and there's always a sound I've never heard before, um, which is is super cool. So yeah, uh, on the the YouTube channel side of things, like I'm just making videos I want to. Uh, and I guess hopefully that translates into things that other people want to watch. Uh, Cause something I, I told myself and I vowed to do was I, I won't make videos to upload to a schedule. I will only release a video when it's something that I'm proud of. Um, Cause it's going to live there for a while. So e- even if I miss my deadline, which I know is bad for the algorithm, it's like, I'm going to take the time and, and tweak it and make it something I like. But quality is quality. So yeah, you keep you you keep doing it that way. I think I think that's the right way to do it. Um you gotta check out there's this thing you can get this app on your phone called Merlin Bird ID. And while you're out, you can oh, no, literally you just cover birder. Did I I'm not I'm not okay. yeah, I, I, I was out uh mushroom hunting with some of my Ohio people. And this guy, Kyle Cannon, told me about this. And so it's this app. You can basically just hold your phone up and record, you know, five minutes of birds tweeting to each other. And it'll tell you every bird that that it hurts. Really cool. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Really cool. So, yeah. And yeah. AI is going to, I'm telling you, with with like iNaturalist and some uh some of these other nature apps, I think AI is going to slowly get integrated into that in a way that over time should be very positive and should help us figure out a lot of stuff. I think should be good. <laughs> I, I know it's coming and it's coming fast, uh, but just it's so hilarious how awful the current like mushroom ID apps are. It can be real <laughs> bad. Yeah. So it's it's a tough reality to imagine in the next couple of years but yeah it's it's coming it'll get really good if um so uh one of my uh ohio people here she just did a post saying she said it's interesting now that so on if you use iNaturalist 
you know, that there's a little graph that shows when the observations for a given species have occurred. So the idea is you get this little bell curve and you can see like the prime time for that mm, mushroom. Yeah. And, and you can even change it. You can do it by region and all this kind of stuff. Anyway, she just did a post the other day saying, uh, we've hit that point where now so many people are doing this, but the AI is getting the IDs wrong on certain mushrooms. So some mushrooms, the ID is not terrible. If you're not stupid and you think about it a little bit, and you're discerning and you really take great photos of your mushrooms and you know some identifying characteristics of it and you take the time to look through some of the top AI you know, recommendations, it can get you pretty close or at least a genus pretty fast. Other ones, it's just terrible. And it falsely IDs mushrooms all the time. So what's happening now is you have, and more people are doing INAT, so more that means more people are potentially doing it bad and incorrectly letting AI identify a mushroom that it's getting wrong. And so now it's skewing the data on observations and when things occur. So it's starting to look like the mushroom season for a given species is shifted when it actually hasn't. It's mm. just the quality of the data has, is shifting. So, so yeah, interesting. There will be a, a an awkward period for sure, you know. But but at the end of the day, I have to believe, and and it's pretty obvious that the the AI's ability to decipher patterns through just astronomical sets of data is just stuff we can never do. And yeah, and don't don't let that growing phase trick you into thinking that we're not living in the future. Oh right, yeah. I mean, it's pretty nuts. Pretty nuts, man. E even the art, the art's terrible. It's soulless. It's still kind of cool. It's, you know, <laughs> pretty, pretty nice strokes. Pretty cool. I can type in stuff like Donald Trump eating a biscuit, sitting on a porch with five pigs playing poker next to him. And then in three seconds, there's a picture of that. That's <laughs> pretty cool, man. What what are we going to do with it? Hopefully we do more cool nature stuff. Hopefully we figure out some important stuff for science. That's I think that's the part that's super exciting, right? Because it it's really good at math and, and all of those uh, correlations right now, right? And patterns like that. Uh, when it can start uh, predicting things in science like that, that will be awesome. Oh, yeah. Well, and just if you think about the data set, you know, the size of genomic data, right? Like a genome is massive. It's mm -hmm. so unbelievable. People can't even comprehend how massive it is. And so for us to find patterns, nearly impossible. You know, it takes just decades of work. It's going to take these AI softwares no time at all to figure some of this stuff out. So I, I, I'm excited. I, I, I hope it makes our medicine better. I hope it helps us figure out how our genomes work better. Uh, you, you know, I just hope that the deep fake scams are kept to a minimum. That's, that's the only thing I'm worried about. <laughs> AI I use for this nefarious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you know it's going to. You know they're going to. You know, there's just some creeps who are going to figure out all sorts of ways to scam people using using AI. It's, I mean, it's already happening. Mm. But what can you do? There's always going to be a bad apple in the bushel, right? Uh, <laughs> I've been, uh, yeah, so kind of detached from even hearing about a lot of the news. Uh, like I, I was my my previous job position, I was working with AI and machine learning um on the environmental automation and so i i caught a lot of info there but i i just had no idea how far it had gone because i've been off social media entirely except for like posting youtube videos um for i guess two over two years now um so i i really missed like all of this coming out and i i didn't i didn't even realize like deep fakes got good or anything like that until very recently like very very recently um so yeah, I'm, I'm behind on a lot of that stuff. I don't quite know how spooky it's getting. I'm but moved out into into nature. I kind of unplugged a bit. I'll integrate back into a world and be like, whoa, 
you're pretty far out there. How do you even have internet? Aren't you kind of in the middle of nowhere? Oh, like, okay. I'm, I'm not, I'm not so in the middle of nowhere, but, uh, the beauty right now is that, uh, Starlink makes it so that you can have internet really anywhere. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're beaming satellite internet. And then I had to go through the, uh, difficult process of beaming that across the property um using these little dishes so i i'm like getting the uh wi-fi at another point in the property and then i'm beaming it five 500 feet away uh to another part oh, of the dude. property yeah <laughs> just living that rural life with <laughs> with satellites and laser beams and yep all Is that, that the stuff. yeah the rural cliches yes classic <laughs> that's always what cracks me up about those survival shows is you're like, man, these people got to survive and they got to have a camera in their face like while they're starving to death. Wow. I would go nuts. That would drive me crazy because the cameraman's eating food. Yeah. So I got to watch Re- the really loud, too. Like they're they're eating celery sticks, yeah. you know, like they're eating something uh, crunchy. <laughs> yeah, I just I couldn't do that. I could not do that. There was what was that one something man? There was a one, it was a Canadian guy that would go out and he did all his own filming. He was truly by himself. Um, that one, that guy just always blew my mind because I it's like, dude, I just like die one night and no one would know what was going on. It, I think it is I would impressive thing to get all of your own B-roll shots as well. Uh yeah. like to to run and set up the camera and then like right. film yourself walking from a distance away and then having to yeah. run and get it. <laughs> like yeah. the, or you're 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 tablet. fishing, you're fishing, you're not catching anything, then you're like, oh shit, I know the producers are gonna want a shot of this, and so I gotta go back and set it up and yeah. Yeah, man, that's that's a lot of work. It's a lot of Different work. breed. So so you got beavers, you got Frog orgies, you got all sorts of cool stuff going on on this property. Uh, how many acres do you get to roam around up there? It is, um, oh, I don't know exactly off the top of my head. I, I'll say 800, um, 800 acres out there. It's it's a lot. And, and a bit of that is uh, fields that are farmed and rented out. Um, but the vast majority of that is uh, nature. and and wildlife that has just uh, either been undisturbed for the whole time or is has come back and had kind of a 50 year head start to come back. Um, so yeah, there, there's a bunch of old growth on the property, which is it's really cool to see. Um, and then lots of like, I guess what part of what makes it so interesting is there are these micro habitats and it's like, I mean, in the middle of Alberta is not somewhere you'd expect to see those, or at least that I would, have guessed they would be but um just because of the topography here like uh it's always like a different section with a different makeup of trees and then uh like i didn't know what the definition of a fen was uh before i got my boot stuck in the quicksand pit (laughs) like somewhere on the property uh but there there are like different types of fens and uh like peat bogs and wetlands and so it gets pretty diverse and it's really cool to explore like i've been out here i mean i've been coming out every weekend i could possibly get away for the past year and then moving out here uh, i've been exploring nonstop, and i i still haven't covered all of the property like i haven't made it around uh the whole way that's what is that like almost a mile and a one and a half square miles dude that's it's a big it's a big track of land well, yeah. I, I think it's like, yeah, I, I wouldn't know the, the square, but it's like, oh, and I don't know the mile conversion, but it's like eight kilometers yeah. across kind of Wow, on the, the width of it. Big, man. That's big. And that's just your little plot of land. I mean, there's hundreds and thousands of square miles of, of forest up there. Yeah. No, no. And that's that's the part that's really exciting. It's like, these are there's all these like nature reserves and and, uh parks that have been set out but you can't find any info about them anywhere online like they just exist as a thought on the map um so i'm really excited to go check out all of those too like that that is in the greater uh goal of my fungal documentation out here 
because like there there's just no info on it like it's it's very i guess my my ultimate goal is to find a a new mushroom species uh that's the the dream and i think it's super feasible out here dude it's absolutely feasible i mean we right read read any of these little white papers about how you know we've identified what a thousand mushroom species or a hundred thousand mushroom species or however many hundred thousand um but they hypothesize there's two to five million species of mushrooms on the planet i mean yeah we haven't hardly made a dent yep i mean rule number one just go somewhere that people don't go you (laughs) might find a new mushroom yeah that easy dude i I had one a little tiny uh I'm sure it's a mycena but didn't show up in Genbank and uh can't figure out what it is and that's in my freaking backyard so you awesome. know who knows you never know I did no microscopy on it so I'm hoping I can find it again this year I know exactly where it came from so we'll see but yeah you just you never know but the problem is you got to do the full due diligence on everything right you got to do the microscopy yeah. you got to have a bunch of great photos and and you gotta go get a barcode. You gotta do all the things. And you're you're They're, always tired when you find them. It's always on your way uh, back perfect. when you're like, ah, yeah. oh, I've been away too long. Like, ah, I shouldn't yeah. have skipped lunch. I always skip lunch. Like, I need to go. And then that's when yeah. you find the the beautiful. And that's one of your. And shoe. that's why you gotta know all the mushrooms too. Because if you find forty mushroom species on one hike, and you can identify half of them, or you can identify the genus, uh, you know, a good chunk of them. It's the ones you don't know about that you just don't. How do you discern? How do you decide what ones are worth the time? Because you can't do all that for everything. Yeah, it's so a good how do you point. Figure it out, man. Because you, you're if you're one person, it's a lot of work. Find find thirty mushrooms, then you're gonna do quality microscopy on all thirty of them. It's like you're you're weak right there, man. That's even even just vouchering like five mushrooms. Yeah. That's yes. a lot. Yes. <laughs> a easy. lot of work. Yes. But now I, I love using INAT just because I take a bunch of pictures. It it saves where I found it. I can either obscure or make that public. Um then especially for a lot of these parks I go hiking at all the time with the dog or with the kids, I can um I can save that information year after year. I can see, oh, did that Romeria come back in the same spot at roughly the same time every year? I can use that to go look at precipitation maps and precipitation data, find out, oh, cool. This year we didn't have as much rain. And what do you know? I didn't find as many of that mushroom. If you make enough observations, you can start putting together, you know, a deeper knowledge because I can't remember all the stuff, right? Just find yeah. too many mushrooms. so. Yeah, I, I found INAT to be very useful. If there's a new mushroom species or a new genus I've never seen, you can go to the genus page, the species page. You can find out a little bit more about, uh, you know, that genus or the genus and species. It's just a great educational tool. If you can't have Walt Sturgeon walking around the woods with you all day, you know, it's the next best thing. Yeah, I, yeah, I, gets, I love it. I use it. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what his daily rate is. We should find that out. We, we I got to have him on, man. I got I got to next time I see him at the Ohio Mushroom Festival, I got to try to get that guy on the podcast. <laughs> I think that would be fun. Be very I don't fun. know him, but I'll put in a good word. I'll I'll bombard him and say, "Oh, man. You got to go on my yeah. cookie." We got to get him. Got to get him. Got to get him. Um, so do you uh any other forays on your your radar in the future? Like you're trying to get back to the States for any events? Oh, I mean, I, I'd love to. I went to Nama and it was right. I know there was, uh, it's probably because it was right on the back of Telluride, but everybody in Nama said, man, like you got to go to Telluride. And, and then everybody, like anyone I've connected with post uh, that as well has been like, oh, like I'll see you at Telluride, right? Like <laughs> so let's hook up at Telluride. So that that would be an awesome one. Um, I don't know if I'll I'll really have time this year. Like something I'm really trying to do for my life in general is just like what feels right. You know, I I spend so much of my life uh, 
pushing away my gut instinct. But since I've started listening to it and really tuning into that, like I haven't made a wrong decision. Like I would one that I could I could look back on and regret. Like I haven't made a wrong decision. And so that that's what I'm gonna do. And like if it if it feels right for me to drop everything and drive down to Nama this year, like just over the border, like I'll I'll do it. Uh if it doesn't quite make sense, I won't do it. Well, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna address your gut directly then. Gut of Ethan. Bring him bring him to Nama this year. <laughs> I'm gonna be there. My family's going to be there. A bunch of my Myco peeps from the Pacific Northwest are going to be there. Uh, it, it should be a good time. So I, I'd love to see it this year. That'd be great. I was thinking, yeah, at, at some foreseeable future, um, you, you'd get back down here and hang out with, with us again. That would be very cool. But now that you're up at Grandpa's place, I think I gotta. I think I'm gonna have to figure out how to get up there. Yeah. No. No pressure, but do it as soon as humanly possible drop everything and, <laughs> and go oh yeah. i'm definitely going to start talking to my my little Michael crew up here about because we're always talking about where we can go next and you know little trips here and there that would that would be fun alberta's a place that uh yeah probably wouldn't go immediately to the top of everyone's uh vacation list but lot, lots of cool spots here i uh, like yeah, Banff and and the Rockies up you, there. It's, it's good stuff. You just, all you got to say is mushrooms and old growth. And <laughs> I, I'm in, I'm excited. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see about making something like that happen. That might be super fun. Um, oh, awesome. Hey dude, the video's amazing. I think what you're doing up there is amazing. Mapping the fungal diversity of that plot of land is very cool. I think that's like should be everybody's first project, whether you're mapping the fungal diversity in your backyard, at your local park, whatever it is, just pick somewhere, start there. That's like the perfect way to start learning about mushrooms. You're very lucky. You got a big little chunk of land and a bunch of little diversity, habitat diversity on the property. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that's going to work out real good for you and be a really fun, exciting thing. And mostly I'm just thinking about, I already know you can make a killer YouTube video. I'm thinking about all these frog orgies. I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about the, the bear that's, you know, sneaking up onto your property. I have a feeling that you're going to get some, have some really cool videos for us to watch. So yeah, dude, don't rush those though. Yeah. Have them be organic. Yeah. The land will, will generate the content for you. Yeah, nature does provide. Yes, nature. Yeah, there you go. The cliche nature provides. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Well, I'm noticing like the sun is actually setting there. It's almost midnight here. Um, yeah, it's, well, it's late for you. Well, and it, we've still got light out. It's cloudy here. It gets late, or sorry, dark so late here, like 1130. Oh, it's stormy right now. We've got dark clouds. Uh, okay, that's what I'm seeing. Cool, man. Well, this was great. I definitely am excited about what you're up to. Um, I'm telling you right now, I hope you keep enjoying making the YouTube content because it's really entertaining. It's really high quality. It's really well crafted. And uh, I'll be watching everyone. I can tell you that. I appreciate that so much. No, and th thank you so much for the the kind words along the way. Like you've really... Uh, put some wind in my sails and i like i mean even just inviting me on here right like that's that's gracious that's super kind to do to have me on and have a chat um it's been awesome to uh observe your content and just what you're doing for the community as well like you're you're putting the work in i know you're busy like i know you are busy three kids that's <laughs> i feel busy and i i've dropped everything to reduce my workload um it's yeah not. Yeah, man. Well, you know, yes, I want to put, I want to put the wind in people's sails who are authentic, who are passionate, who are enthusiastic, who are genuine. Um, that's really what I've been trying to do from day one on the show is have the people that really, truly love to grow mushrooms, really, truly interested in mushrooms. Uh, we've now expanded. You don't got to grow them. You can just love to find them. You can, you know, whatever you want to do with them, we'll, we'll have you on. But yeah, you 100%, I'm excited. I have a feeling in five years, 
who who knows what cool mushroom stuff you might be up to i'm 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 looking forward to it well you you've certainly got a friend in me so i i'll be in touch uh all right dude all right thank you so much and dude i'm gonna figure out how to get up there uh as soon as i can sooner than later definitely gonna have to find a way to get up there and, and hang out that'll be fun we'll do an on location unreal i'll wait patiently twiddling my thumbs by my phone until i get that email yeah, until your beavers start uh, sneaking up behind you, then yeah. th then you got to worry about them. But <laughs> cool, man. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, and uh, please, please, please just enjoy where you're at. Enjoy that amazing piece of property that I already know is going to deepen and... Uh, nurture so many positive spiritual experiences for you mm. i think i think it's gonna be really really great dude mm. thank you thank you yeah man all right cool talk to you soon man talk to you soon all right guys that was ethan zapatch he is uh it's a cool guy man hopefully i can get up there uh soon and check out that property man see what kind of mushrooms he's got but even if i can't and if you can't what you can do is check him out on his YouTube channel. So just, uh, it, you know, go to YouTube, type in Ethan Zapach, Z-A-P-A-C-H, and uh, you'll find him real quick, real easy. He's got all sorts of cool content. Uh, anyway, next week, uh, very special guest. Um, stay tuned. I, I'm, I'm getting them booked up. We're, we're trying to get, I'm trying to get it set up so that when I'm gone for the Mexico trip, I still got some episodes in the can that, the, the, that I can schedule. So uh, you got a pretty heavy recording week next week. So stay tuned for some, some cool episodes. Uh, and until next week, go grow some mushrooms. Mm -hmm.